Hi, today I'm going to show you how to build the OpenSSL libraries with Visual Studio 2022 on Windows. You will need the following items to build OpenSSL on Windows. You will need the OpenSSL source code. You will need Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. You will need Strawberry Perl. And you will need the NetAssembler software. The links to all of these items are in the description. I'm assuming you've already got Visual Studio 2022 installed and configured for C++ development. I'm not going to get into the installation process, but if you do need to download Visual Studio, you need to go to visualstudio.microsoft.com. Scroll down to the download Visual Studio link, not the Visual Studio code link, but the download Visual Studio link, and then select Community 2022. Download the installer and follow the instructions. It's a lengthy installation process, probably will take a good I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the speed of your internet connection. Okay, so now let's go and download the OpenSSL source code. To do that, visit OpenSSL.org in a new browser window or tab. Click on the Downloads link and look for the latest version you can find. For me, it's 3.2.0. I'm going to download the Starball. I'm going to pause this video and expand this archive. I've expanded this archive on my C drive. So as you can see, I have a folder, OpenSSL 3.2.0. If I open it, there's another folder in there, OpenSSL 3.2.0. And in there, there's a bunch of files and folders. Since I have two folders called OpenSSL 3.2.0 nested within each other, I'm going to rename the inner folder to SRC source because it contains source code files. Now let us go and download Strawberry Perl for Windows. So I'm going to go to www.strawberryperl. Dot com. And I'm just going to download the MSI version. The download should take a few seconds. I'm going to launch the installer and install Strawberry Pearl. You'll get a warning that this app is unrecognized. Just click on more info and say run anyway. Click next. It's the usual installer. Take a note of the directory in which it's being installed. I'm going to change this directory. I'm going to install it in uh, C Strawberry Perl instead of just uh, what it is suggesting. So I'll just call it C Strawberry Perl. Mainly because if I see a folder called Strawberry on my C drive, I'm not going to remember what it was for. Once the installation is complete, we need to now download the NetWide Assembler. Visit nasm.us in your web browser. Use the link for the most stable version. Click on Win64 for the Win64 package. Download the installer, NASM21601 installer x64.exe. You will need to install NetWide Assembler as an administrative user. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to right click, show in folder, right click, and then say run as administrator. Install for anyone using the computer. Click on next, click on next. Actually, it's worth looking at the uh, location where this software will be installed. See program files and ASM. Click on next, click on install. With that out of the way, you'll need to add the path to the Perl executable as well as the NetWide assembler to your system environment variable. One way to do it is as follows. Right click your this PC icon, click on properties, Look at Advanced System Settings and click on Environment Variables here. Click on the Path Variable, click on Edit and make sure you add the following environment variables to this list. C Strawberry Pearl slash C slash bin C Strawberry Pearl slash Pearl slash Site slash bin C Strawberry Pearl slash Pearl slash bin and C Program File slash NASM. Uh, if you've used a default installation directory for Strawberry Pearl, then remember that it's C Strawberry. I changed it during installation to be C Strawberry Pearl for my computer. Once you've verified that these four values are part of the path environment variable, click on OK. Click on OK. And then once again, click on OK to close the system properties dialog. Let us quickly test that our Perl and NASM installation are working. Launch a command prompt and very quickly just type Perl minus V and type NASM minus V. 
If your output looks similar to mine, then Perl and NetAssembler are both installed and configured correctly, and we can move on to the next step. Close the standard command prompt and launch the Visual Studio command prompt. Now the way to do this is to go to your start menu in the taskbar and look for the item x86 x64 cross tools command prompt for Visual Studio 2022. I happen to have two different versions of Visual Studio on my computer. That's why I'm seeing two of these results. I'm going to use this one, the one for Visual Studio 2022. You will now need to navigate to the folder on your computer where you've got the source files for OpenSSL. In my case, it was on the C drive uh, specifically. It was on in C, OpenSSL, if I recall, 320 and SRC source. So I just copy this and cd. Next, you need to run the config command to configure the OpenSSL source package. The way to do it is, is as follows. Make sure you're in the directory that contains the source files and the config command, which is here. If you notice here, you have this file called config. Type the following. After pressing enter on this command, you should see an output similar to mine and you should see a message OpenSSL has been successfully configured. Uh, taking a quick look at the uh, command that we used, uh, VCWin64A will create a uh, library for using Visual Studio and for Windows 64. Uh, the prefix attribute determines where the build artifacts will be placed. The OpenSSL directory at attribute determines where the SSL settings files will be placed. The way I have set this up, I want the build artifacts to be placed here, right beside the source folder in a new folder called build. It is possible to build a static library version of, of the libraries. To do so, add the no shared attribute to the end of this command. But I'm not going to do that because using static library versions of OpenSSL require one to link with many other libraries, which would be the subject of another video. Once the OpenSSL library has successfully been configured, it's time to actually build it. And it's really simple to do. Just type nmake and press enter. This will take a while, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. I'm going to pause this video and uh, resume once this process is complete. After the build process is complete, you can go over to your source folder. And if you sort the files by date modified, you will see that there are a number of new files that have been created. But these have all been created in the source folder and there isn't a build folder created just yet. To create the installation folder, you need to type nmake install. Once the command is finished executing, you can close the command prompt window. Notice that the build folder has been created in the OpenSSL 320 directory. In here, you can see the bin folder where you have the DLLs, you have libcrypto and you have libssl DLL. And in the lib folder, you have the libraries that you need to use in your Visual Studio project. Keep in mind that these libraries are meant for use with dynamic link libraries. So these are just stubs, basically. They're really small, 138 kilobytes and just about 1.2 MB. And that's it. That's how you build OpenSSL on uh, Windows with Visual Studio. If you found this video helpful, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. And thank you.